Good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Building Blockchain Products for UNICEF, How to Get Involved. Um, my name is Shane O'Connor, and I am an innovation manager with uh, UNICEF's Office of Innovation, uh, which is based in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, but I'm very happy to be here at DevCon with you guys. Uh, probably a lot of you know UNICEF as an organization. You know, you've heard of us. You know what we do. Uh, maybe it's not so clear exactly why and how we work with blockchain and technologies in general. So UNICEF's mandate is really to advocate for children's rights, um, to try and make sure that they uh, achieve the best outcomes uh, and make sure that their health, education, protection is, is maximized across the world. And UNICEF operates in about 190 countries around the world. But UNICEF also has an Office of Innovation. And within that Office of Innovation, we have a Ventures team. And we have a, a, a special team called Giga, and we'll be hearing from them in a little while. Go to the next slide. So actually, UNICEF has been working with blockchain since, or looking at blockchain since about 2014, 2015. Um, and UNICEF is one of the larger UN organizations. So big, bureaucratic, uh, sometimes slow to move. So um, it takes us a long time to try and get UNICEF to move in, in this type of space uh, and to get us up to speed on how to properly use the technology that's out there in the real world to support UNICEF's programming. Um, uh, my own team that I work with, the Venture Fund, uh, we have been providing uh, kind of seed funding uh, to support what we call frontier technology solutions that benefit children and the world. And we have some people from a few of the companies that have benefited from that here in the room today. Uh, but really from the slide there, you'll see we're looking at the intersection of the needs of 1 billion people and $100 billion industries. So we look at AI, um, drones, 3D printing, machine learning, and also blockchain and cryptocurrency. We've actually gone through three rounds of blockchain um, funding cohorts. We did our first cohort in about 2018, uh, which was a more of a kind of a thematic um, call for submissions. And you'll see that we had um, submissions from supply chain solutions, digital certificates and badges, impact investing. We did a second cohort back in 2020, which was more focused on financial inclusion um, and, and that kind of particular, not, not so thematic, but more focused. Um, and some of the kind of products, platforms and companies that came into that cohort were focused on humanitarian cash transfers, remittances and decentralized decision making tools. We have a cohort that is about to be announced in the next one month or so. Uh, and this is some of the, our third cohort around blockchain. Um, and you can see some of the um, uh, kind of solutions and, and companies that have been involved there. And uh, yeah, I think we'll, hopefully people can see those uh, coming out pretty soon. Next one. Uh, this is really exciting. And Asana is gonna be giving a talk later on at about 540 uh, on the, uh, the crypto phone, so I won't take too much of her thunder here. Uh, but in 2019, uh, UNICEF launched a uh, crypto fund. And we were, in fact, the first UN agency to be able to receive, hold, and disperse cryptocurrency. So this is a, a big, big thing for the UN uh, and a, certainly a big, big thing for UNICEF. Um, and this has really been able to help us to build digital solutions and particularly digital public goods. Uh, to help us ensure kind of equitable access to these technologies and these tools to really try and support human development, obviously through the lens of uh, UNICEF's focus, UNICEF's mandate on um, supporting children. Uh, one of the new applications, again, new for UNICEF, new for UN uh, in using blockchain is 
uh, cash-based transfers, both kind of in a development context, supporting social protection schemes, but also uh, possibly more interesting in humanitarian situations. So responding to disasters, trying to get funding funds out to communities who've been affected. Uh, we're actually at the moment looking at uh, blockchain for cash transfer, and we're in fact, I don't know if they're here in the room yet, but we do have another cohort graduate that is supporting us, uh, Rum San from Nepal. Uh, but using blockchain for cash transfer to really increase uh, transparency of these um, processes so everyone can see the movement of the funds all the way to the beneficiary. And this is interesting for us as a UN agency, but also particularly interesting, I think, to donors too. And of course, saving costs compared to the traditional aspects for this, um, this particular space. Um, UNICEF is also looking currently, we're using blockchain to support the, um, the cash transfer programming. It's not cryptocurrency at the moment. It does get converted to fiat, but we are hopefully looking at um, using pure crypto uh, cash transfer. Uh, cash transfers uh, early in 2023, I think, is what we're looking at. So um, my name is uh, Herben. I lead the uh, blockchain work for Giga at, uh, at UNICEF. Um, Giga is kind of like operates as a, a little startup within the uh, Office of Innovation at UNICEF. Um, we, were started, we started in 2019, um, and we're sort of a, a joint venture between UNICEF and the uh, ITU, uh, the International Telecommunications Union. And our goal is to connect all the world's schools to the internet by the year 2030. Um, so we have quite a lot of work to do. Uh, and we operate along sort of three uh, pillars of work. The first pillar is uh, mapping. Uh, believe it or not, we actually don't know where all the schools uh, in the world are. Uh, so we're using machine learning uh, algorithms to um, analyze satellite data and identify schools and actually help governments find all the schools in their country. Uh, so that's always an interesting conversation with the Ministry of Education. Um, the second pillar is about financing. Uh, so we estimate that it's gonna cost approximately $428 billion to connect all the uh, world schools to the internet, uh, which is quite a lot of money. So we're really investigating uh, like innovative financing models uh, to find sustainable ways to, uh, to make this happen. So there's two types of expenses that uh, we, have to, we have to solve for. The first one is obviously sort of capital expenses, you know, putting fiber in the ground, uh, putting, putting towers up, that sort of thing. But the second is, you know, once you connect a school, you have to pay for ongoing internet connectivity. You all sort of have subscriptions to that. Uh, that's kind of like how it works. You have to pay your bills, otherwise you get disconnected. So we've got a team sort of focusing on, on making that happen. Um, and the third pillar is uh, about actually connecting. So we uh, operate a, a team called uh, the Accelerate Team, where um, we work with governments to investigate different kinds of business models for different kinds of scenarios. You know, schools in urban areas need a different solution than schools in super rural areas. So we work with governments to try to figure that out and advise them on uh, sort of the best way to go. Um, so that they, at some point, can take over the financing and the rollout of these programs uh, and do it sustainably. So, like I said, uh, we launched in 2019. Our goal is to connect all the world schools by 2030. Uh, so far, we were joined by 19 countries. Um, we have connected 5,300 schools. We've mapped about 1.1 million out of an estimated 6.5. So there's still like quite a lot of work to do. Um, and we were super happy to be joined by 14 uh, partners that support us, including uh, Ericsson, Dubai Cares, Musk Foundation. Uh, Dell recently joined, uh, which is a really big deal. Um, and we've raised about $210 million uh, towards this goal. So as you can see, we're still quite far off from the 428 uh, billion uh, required. Um, so I'm gonna talk also today a little bit about some of the projects and the products that we're developing at Giga. Um, so the first one is what we call Giga Accounts, which is like a, a accounting platform and a sort of monitoring platform for the people who uh, are actually controlling the money to pay for school internet connectivity. So the way it usually uh, happens is that um, a country government or a UNICEF country office will 
write out a contract for like a hundred schools or a thousand schools in a country uh, and have very little tools to be, be able to actually monitor whether this uh, internet service is delivered. Uh, so what we're developing is a way for them to make it super easy to monitor that. So we, um, we have our own sort of real-time data uh, application that schools can install on their, on their networks and report data back to us so that if data is subpar or connections get disconnected, um, we can actually hold uh, internet service providers accountable. So that's, uh, that's our thing. And what we're hoping to go with this is um, right now the tool is really sort of to support, uh, support these people in their, in, their, in their work. But what would be really cool is to uh, actually uh, connect this with uh, smart contracts and monitor whether internet quality is delivered. And if it is, automatically pay internet service providers. So that becomes super easy for people to, uh, to connect schools and to, to get paid for that. Um, the second product we're working on is uh, called Connectivity Credits. It's kind of um, kind of similar to the carbon credit market. So we're building a global uh, marketplace for uh, connectivity um, to make the, con the connection of schools sort of more equitable. So what's currently the case in the free market is that schools in rural areas get connected and the ones in urban, in, in urban areas don't. Or if you're a school in the rainforest, uh, an internet service provider isn't gonna like lay a, a fiber optics cable there. So what we're doing is we're um, providing a marketplace where we put tokens on these difficult to connect, to connect schools and allow internet service providers to redeem these tokens for benefits from the government. Like for example, tax breaks or special deals when uh, bidding for uh, spectrum uh, bandwidth and that, that sort of thing. Um, so that's currently uh, in progress in, uh, in Botswana and we're looking for uh, other countries to, uh, to implement this in. Um, another area that we're investigating uh, is NFTs. So we've launched uh, in the beginning of this year, uh, the first, uh, first, the largest, I could say the largest sort of collection within the UN uh, uh, for this called Patchwork Kingdoms. Uh, it's based on all the school data that we have. So for these 1.1 million mapped schools that we have, uh, we worked with a data uh, artist, a data analytics artist, to create these 1,000 unique art pieces uh, and raise funds for Giga. So uh, we, we sold all of them, raised about 700,000 uh, uh, US dollars for that, uh, which is really cool. And um, looking to sort of build upon that uh, with our follow-up collection. Uh, currently, title in progress called NFT2, uh, uh, where we're basically uh, looking to build the world's most comprehensive decentralized database of school data. So the idea would be to um, create an NFT for every single school in the world, um, give this NFT for, uh, to the schools themselves to own, uh, and give them the ability together with their communities to uh, edit the data for their school, keep it up to date, uh, and, and own this data themselves. So right now it's sort of on our cloud server in Frankfurt, uh, sort of locked up uh, and for, for us to use, but it'd be really cool if schools own their own data. So that's where we're hoping to go with that. So we're looking to use NFTs as a sort of uh, a portal into, into making that happen. And the last uh, project that we're uh, actually uh, really keen to talk about uh, at this event, it's like we're finally allowed to talk about this in public, which is really cool, is uh, a staking uh, experiment that we've been running uh, in Rwanda. So um, we've been working uh, with the Ethereum Foundation and the, the government of Rwanda um, to create an impact investing product uh, using Ethereum staking to pay for school connectivity. So that's um, currently live, and uh, we'll also be talking about that more in the panel discussion on Thursday, if people are interested. I think that's it, and then I'll hand over, ah, there's one more. So, I mean, Rome wasn't built in a day, uh, and these products aren't either. Uh, we're still, you know, iterating on these. Uh, so we're asking you guys, uh, do you want to help us build? Uh, so... Antonio Gonterres, um, yeah, uh, m m mentioned us at the at the previous sort of uh, general assembly. So there's really sort of been a, a global call now for governments to step up and uh, and, and and help with this uh, help with this cause. Uh, to to finish with the with the talk before we go into uh, breaking sessions is that uh, we we cannot do this alone. 
we are relatively a fairly small team compared to all the things that we do and all the products that we are building. Uh, so we work with companies, with people on different ways. Uh, one, one is that we have a tech team, an internal tech team of product, product managers, data scientists, uh, software developers, and we are continuously sourcing for that. So if you are interested in joining our team, keep an eye in our website because we have different uh, jobs that go out there. Uh, at the moment, we have one for a blockchain developer that's open. I think it's going to be open for another week uh, or so. So if, yeah, if either you're interested, you know anyone that might be interested, uh, please spread the word. There will be another one for a, a blockchain product manager role as well that will be coming out soon and uh, others will keep coming out. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on that and, and apply. Uh, we also, especially for blockchain work, because uh, many of the things that Herben was presenting are so new and they are experiments and prototypes that we are building. We work with external companies and with vendors to, to build them. And then we take them and we uh, uh, scale them internally, but we first work with companies to, to build them. Uh, so again, if you are a company that's working in the blockchain space, uh, either on the NFT space, staking, uh, tokens, uh, and, and others, and uh, you are interested in working with us, uh, there will be, again, few calls uh, for companies to apply to help us build the, the things that Herben was presenting. So there will be uh, one call to help us build this NFT2 that doesn't have a name yet. Uh, so we'll be working with a company to, to build that. Uh, the same for the accounting platform uh, that he presented, Kick Accounts. We have a working prototype at the moment. We'll, again, be looking for a company to help us build the next version of that and uh, test it, pilot it in a couple of countries. So again, if you are in that space of smart contracts, uh, etc., cetera, uh, feel free to apply. And then the last one that will also shortly be coming out, it's on the connectivity credits. Uh, we are building that at the moment in Botswana, uh, but looking to uh, pilot it in a couple of other countries. So there will be another call looking for companies to build that uh, token marketplace for, for connectivity. And then, uh, yeah, I think those are the, the main calls that will be coming out. Uh, of course, then we also work with uh, companies as partners. Uh, so not so much uh, contracting them, but we work with companies like Dell, uh, the Mask Fund, well, that's not a company, but the Mask Foundation, Ericsson, IH Towers as partners where uh, these, these companies give in-kind contributions, either funding, monetary, uh, but also sometimes they give us tech support, either through their developers, through their team. Uh, so again, if you're interested in helping out, uh, reach out to us. Uh, and then finally, uh, the last one, it's the venture fund. So if you are a startup in the blockchain space, uh, there are continuous calls that are coming out for that. Uh, there will be one uh, that will go out soon around climate tech solutions. So if, again, you are building something on that, uh, 20th of October, it's coming out. Uh, so, so again, that will be out and uh, it's an investment of 100,000 dollars, uh, more or less. Uh, with that, I would also encourage you to check this QR code uh, so that you can register uh, like that. We can also keep you in the loop. And if we have something that we also think that might be relevant to you, we can uh, keep you in our network and uh, reach out to you.